Alrighty, gang, we are back. We are here and we want to welcome you guys back over back to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got another week ahead of us, which is going to be fantastic. And uh, if you're joining us for the first time, my name is Brenda Neckbottle. I am known as the Brenda, the HR lady. And with me is uh, Suzanne Lucas, who is also known as the evil HR lady. One is not better than the other. <laughs> we are a little flash on how you can find us here on social on our social channels easily. So how are you, ma'am? Well, I am good. It is another beautiful day here in Switzerland, um, which I'm very, very pleased with. Sunny in the 70s. Very happy. Life is good. Life is good. And you're off on an adventure. I am. I am traveling for business. So today I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, and it is looks like the sky is going to open up. So I'm really glad that I'm parked in my hotel room today and not out and about doing <clears throat> stuff because it's a lot drier where I am right now. <laughs> it's a lot drier inside than outside. Right. This is the type of wisdom you get from the real air show. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. You get you get it all. It's like the news. You get weather. You get you know international coverage. It's pretty special awesome. interest stories. <laughs> That's right. And the latest on the Kardashians. No, I don't even know anything about the Kardashians. So I don't want to know anything about the Kardashians. Okay, but I do. I would. I would love to know what you are thinking about for our topic today. <clears throat> And well, I will let you kick it off I, since it is, you've got something pretty neat cooking with it. I do have something neat cooking with it. The question is, when do you go to your boss about mental health issues or when do you bring them up at work? And this is something that's really, really changing as a culture um, thing. Last week, I was at lunch with a, a friend. Um, we were sitting outside. Um at a restaurant that's on one of those foot traffic only streets. And one of my daughter's friends walked by and she stopped and said hi. And I mentioned to her how sad it was that um, she had my daughter that they had to cancel their lunch earlier in the week. And she said, I know I'm so sorry. I forgot I had a psych appointment. And she was with a bunch of friends. And I was like, yeah, no big deal. You know, just reschedule. And my dining companion turned to me and she's like, it's so strange to me how this generation is so open about that. She said, nobody my age would just casually mention, oh, I had a psych appointment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really true. Um, you know, when, when I was young and charming, um, that wasn't something you talked about. And now it's become much more open. And that's a great thing. I'm... 100% in favor of that. <clears throat> so the question then becomes is how open should you be at work? That is a good question. I mean, I would say that's definitely true for a younger generation. I think an older generation, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. Older generation, not so much. Um, and it, it's becoming more of a thing, um, but it's not something that everybody's comfortable with. There are, um, there are people that are still embarrassed and there are stereotypes and stigmas yeah. associated with mental illness. There's also a lot of misunderstanding about what mental illness is and yeah. what it looks like. And, and that's something that can be difficult from a management standpoint and from an employee standpoint as well, because, you don't want to go throwing all of your problems onto your boss or onto your coworkers. I mean, there's being open and then there's being too much information. But, <laughs> TMI. TMI. <laughs> <clears throat> but if there's going to come a point where you need an accommodation under the Americans with Disabilities Act, you're far better bringing it up before than waiting until you do. So from the employer standpoint versus the employee standpoint, what, 
where do you see things falling into place there? See, I think it really is dependent upon the relationship you have with your boss um, and what kind of person that is and then how you feel about it. Because while, while I'm here to say um, it should be no more embarrassing to say I have a psych appointment than I have an appointment because I have a sinus infection, um, it shouldn't be any more embarrassing. But for whatever reason, it is um, more embarrassing. And if you're a private person, you may not want to let people know. But depending on what your condition is and the severity of it, you may be eligible for accommodations under the Americans with Disabilities Act. But if you wait until you've screwed up because you don't have the accommodation you need and they say, we're going to put you on a performance improvement plan or we're going to fire you and you come out with, but wait, I'm suffering from depression. It's going to be a lot harder for them to believe you and it may be too late at that point. I, it, that. It's hard for employers to believe anybody if it's not something that's tangible, they can't see it. And, and, and that's just, you know, under the best of circumstances, those something I refer to as invisible disabilities, right? The things that you can't see, the things that you can't touch, things that can't, can't be identified <clears throat> through some form of through majority of the senses. Right. And, and so from an, and I'll take the standpoint from the employers, I've seen a lot of employers, even when people have been with the best of intentions have come forward and said, you know, I have this and I have to go deal with it. They, there's still speculation as to whether or not the employee is running a gamut or not. Yeah, absolutely. There is. And it's, and the problem is, is that there are employees that will abuse and take advantage of that. Absolutely. Um, there are. Which is the same with a lot of things. Um, I remember um, when I was working in the labor and employment law department of a Fortune 100 company, we had one employee who had a medical condition and needed to go out on intermittent FMLA. Mm -hmm. Well, suddenly her coworkers were like, what's this? This is cool. And then, then all three of them in the group suddenly had these conditions that required intermittent FMLA. And we were so, so, so skeptical about employee two and employee three, but they had the paperwork from their doctors and you certainly couldn't say no when the doctors are saying this, but you know, it just so happens that after the first employee gets it, then suddenly two more do yeah. <clears throat> that type of thing happens. It does. Um, and so it's not that you're a bad employer if you're skeptical, but, um, you know, I have depression and you probably wouldn't know it from, you know, talking to me. Um, first of all, I'm medicated. And secondly, I have a therapist. Her name is Tara. Hi, Tara. She probably doesn't watch this, um, <laughs> but, um, you wouldn't necessarily know it. And I've had people say, well, you don't have depression because you know, you're happy and bubbly. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> the, that's not the face I present. Isn't necessarily what I'm right. feeling. Right. Um, <clears throat> you go to your boss and say, yeah, well, I suffer from depression. And there's some days that I just find it really difficult to get out of bed. And my you know, doctor says I should do this or that or whatever. And you say, you're always so cheery. Um, yeah, that's a lie. It's not a lie. It's not. But it's hard for a boss to tell you. And then you have other things that if you say, I have schizophrenia, then suddenly um, bosses and coworkers are terrified that you're going to you know, murder them in their sleep because we have this view of, of people with some mental illnesses as being dangerous. And that's not an accurate depiction either. Um, but there's that fear going around of, oh my gosh, this is, this is something to be really, really scared of. And it's not, I mean, you don't want to get schizophrenia. It's a terrible disease, but it's not contagious. 
and it's not dangerous to others in the vast majority of cases. Um, so we really need to get to this point where it's okay to talk about it and people not freak out. But the reality is some people are going to freak out and some people are going to take advantage of it. Yeah, it is reality. Years ago, <clears throat> we've all had this one employee and I'm just going to call him Ricky. And Ricky, <clears throat> we had, I had, I'll never forget this. So where my old office was, um, I didn't have, I only had, you know, one door in, one door out, right? And um, I had an employee that came up and was standing in my doorway. <clears throat> and he's rocking back and forth like this. And I'm like, what's going on? It was very clear that there was a problem. And I'm now in a hallway where there's nobody else around. And I did not know what to expect with this rocking employee going back and forth in, in my doorway. <clears throat> and I like, so how are you? What's going on? He goes, things aren't good. And I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, okay. So what does that mean? And uh, I said, what can I do for you? And he's like, I have to take a leave. This is effective immediately. I was like, okay. <clears throat> I said, do you want to come in sit down? He goes, no. I was like, you want to just stand in the doorway? He goes, yeah. I was like, okay. And he just keeps rocking. And, and I said, um, what can I, how can I help you with your leave? And he's like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, so I said, here's the thing. I said, very clearly, it sounds like you got some pretty big stuff going on. Um, know that you're in a hallway right now <clears throat> and anything you say, your voice is going to carry and other people are going to hear it. So can you at least take two steps inside my office? And he did. I was like, okay. I said, you can still sit down if you want. He goes, no. Nope. And I was like, that's fine. The chair's there if you want it. So what I did is I told him, I said, I'm going to print out your paperwork. And then what I need you to do, I need you to have your doctor fill out the paperwork. And then I need your doctor's office to send this to me. No fail within 24 to 48 hours. I said, can you, can you make sure that that happens? He goes, yeah, I can do that. I was like, okay. And he says, you haven't asked me why. And I said, you don't, I don't need you to tell me why. And he says, well, can I? And I said, if you wish, but it's, you don't have to. So in a 24 hour time period, um, his best friend committed suicide. His fiance broke up with him and his father was diagnosed with cancer. Oh boy. And he crashed. I mean, li like literally emotionally just collapsed. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, um, nobody, none of those three parties even knew what was going on with him. It, you know, his fiance didn't know that his best friend just committed suicide. His dad had no idea that the other two events had taken place. And he just, I mean, his body, the world and his bottom of his world just fell out. So he was, he was out on <clears throat> FMLA leave for about like two months. He went into a facility immediately. Uh, just because he just crashed. And so Ricky, in a week period of time, in one week, uh, came into my office. <clears throat> and I know this person very well, acting morbidly depressed, not asking any questions, just walks up to me with his doctor's note. And he says, my doctor is writing me off work for three months due to high stress. And it, my internal monologue went, so this is your next new game because everything with him is a game and right. it was an attention getting game. And, and, and it was widely known, you know, he was a complainer. He was, you know, person that drummed up a lot of drama. He was a person that challenged unnecessarily policy and procedure for things that he, that didn't impact him. And so this was the latest. And so <clears throat> within two days I had received a, I said, all right, so I did the same thing for my got him his paperwork. I said, this needs to be filled out. I need this back within 24 to 48 hours. <clears throat> I gave him a little bit different speech, um, in process. And, um, and then I, I mean, he did it. And then I got uh, a word three days later that, um, one of the, one of his coworkers received a text from him that he and his family were down in Disneyland for three weeks. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. So 
it was a very peaceful three weeks. We'll just put it that way. But it was also this guy put himself on the X for sure. And eventually he got caught. He got caught falsifying and they wound up terminating him. So. Well, and that's one thing that in today's day of social media and constant interaction with people, that it's a lot easier to catch. Oh, people. my yes. And, you know, I always tell managers and HR not to be friends with their employees on Facebook. Yeah. Don't follow their Twitter feeds. Don't follow their Instagram feeds. Don't friend them on Facebook or follow them on TikTok or whatever one does on TikTok. I don't know. I'm too old for TikTok. Um, and they said, well, how will I know if someone's doing something bad? And I'm like, you'll know. <laughs> you'll know. So, or one of their employees, one of your employees will tell you. One of your because, employees will tell yeah, you. Somebody's going to let you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it may not be immediate. It may not be immediate, but it'll happen. And, and I've had it happen. Um, you know, in a position, I wound up having an employee who, and this is a little off subject, but I'll keep this truncated, an employee that was going to court and, um, you know, kept telling me that the same day, and, and he just kept coming up to me telling me that he was going to family court to get his son back, which I thought was very bizarre because I don't talk to him about anything. And sure enough, <clears throat> somebody said, yeah, um, he's at court today. And I, and I said, really? And he said, yeah. He said, I thought he already went to court this morning. He goes, no. No, no, it's not the same reason. And then, you know, they just reported it and they said he was arrested for assault. And he was actually, his trial was that day. I said, well, that's pretty difficult to be in two places at one spot, don't you think? <laughs> so the, the summons that he originally gave was falsified and <clears throat> I verified it. And sure enough, I just had a conver lovely conversation with the clerk of courts that morning. So, but anyway. Yeah. That's a little off subject and I don't want no, to get it. It's, it's the same thing as that you'll, you'll find out um, because people can't stand to leave their vacation off Instagram and they can't stand to, to not tweet their coworkers or whatever. So yeah. if someone is lying to you about needing time off or something, it's, um, it's, it's pretty, often the case that you'll find out without digging on your own. You don't have, I mean, I've, I've heard of companies hiring private investigators or whatever. Generally that's not a needed thing. <laughs> I would. Oh yeah. That one, that one creeps me out. I, I would not want a private investigator investigating my employees. No, no. I, I just I think that just opens. I wouldn't either, but I do want to say mm -hmm. if you're off for mental health reasons, that doesn't mean you have to sit in your house the whole time. You know, if your employees are reporting, Oh, I saw Jane at the mall. It doesn't necessarily mean Jane isn't following the advice of her doctor or whatever. Um, yeah. Jen, Jane is not required to be in a padded room. No, 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 no. Um, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of things around that, um, so happens that you have your emergency, the same three weeks that you have this thing booked for Disneyland that has been booked for six months in advance, you know, that's totally suspect seeing you at the mall when you're off for mental health reasons, not suspect. Um, that's, you know, a normal thing. And incidentally, prior to COVID seeing someone at the grocery store when they're out sick, isn't a suspect thing either, but that's a different topic. Um, anyway, back to the, to the mental health thing. Um, so if an employee comes to you, you know, well, Brenda gave some great examples of somebody coming to her, who was clearly in crisis. And instead yeah. of being like, you know, well, you've got to tell me what's going on. Uh, you know, it's just, okay. You're clearly in crisis what can I do to help you? And yeah. even somebody that's not clearly in crisis, you know, to say, look, this is what I'm going through. And the response of the boss or HR should generally be, what can I do to help you? That's not a commitment. It's, it's a statement of being human. Like what, what help do you need? And depending on the severity, it may be required under the Americans with Disabilities Act, or it may be required under FMLA, 
or it may just be a nice thing to do. Um, you know, I'm totally stressed out. I'm having difficulty falling asleep at night. Is it okay if I change my schedule? So I'm working 10 to six instead of nine to five. That might be reasonable for your business, no matter what, in which case you say, right. sure, no problem. Or it might not be the best thing for your business and it might be complicated and you might need them to qualify for Americans with Disabilities Act protection in order to give them that. But that's, you know, it's going to vary from case to case. It's not like a broken leg where your leg is broken or it's not broken, right? Although there right. are certainly different severities of broken legs. And something to remember too is that when somebody is coming to you for a leave of absence, um, if, you know, if they have to go under FMLA coverage <clears throat> for a temporary mental health um, break, you're not entitled to know anything. All you need under FMLA, you need to know when they're leaving, when they're coming back, and are they able to come back with or without restrictions? And so the paperwork that is completed by the uh, physician is the physician is the one who determines either under FMLA and ADA, either one, um, what those accommodations are <clears throat> for the most part. And that's the best way to go about identifying accommodations for either is that it really should be coming from the physician because under the ADA, employees are not the determining factor of the accommodation, nor is the employer. However, <clears throat> if they ask for an accommodation and you grant it, that's, and you're able to grant it, and it's not a hardship and under the definition of undue hardship to, you know, under the, under the eyes of the law, you can go ahead and do that. But if it's one of those things where you want to put the brakes on, <clears throat> you're like, yeah, I don't know if this is the direction that we want to go in. If it's coming from the physician, then you have to take a look at it as to whether or not um, it would actually qualify as an undue hardship. And that's a, that's a, that's a very specific definition. And that also takes the burden off the manager and off HR and puts it on the employee and the physician, which is right. nice because we're not doctors um, and we're not therapists. Um, so it's really great to say, hey, here's something that um, someone else is going to make this decision up to the severity of it. One yep. thing that we can do is direct people to the employee assistance program if you have one. And if you don't have one, get one. They're really cheap as far as benefits go. They're not expensive. And they can be tremendously helpful. Um, you know, somebody like me, and I say I have depression and I have a therapist. So if I'm having a crisis, I already have someone I can call, right? But not everybody has those things lined up. And an employee assistance program can really, really be helpful, especially in a time of crisis. Um, because a lot of times, um, like the, your story um, about Ricky, um, he probably didn't have that stuff lined up because all those things hit him within a 24 hour period. Uh, it wasn't a, an ongoing thing, you know, yeah. to, to get help that he needs. You know, we're not doctors, we're not therapists, but we can direct you to an EAP. Yeah. Ricky wasn't, Ricky wasn't the one that got impacted. Ricky was the problematic employee. Oh, but that's okay. No. Just for the sake of clarification, but right. I didn't give the name of the other one. Employee A and Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Employee A who had his whole world fall apart and then bad employee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And something um, too. And then, you know, yeah. And then we're going to, you know, start to wind this up because we do have our questions for each other. Um, yeah. Is that, you know, one thing is very important when it comes to you as a leader or you as the HR professional, <clears throat> the person who's required to handle this, or even, you know, the manager, whoever, whatever role you're playing is that you do need to manage your emotions about it and then maintain or adjust your expectations. Because regardless of whether you think the person's lying or not, regardless of whatever your opinions are on the situation or not, you have to adjust. You, you really are not going to have a choice to not go down this road. 
just because you're unhappy about it doesn't mean that you're not facing it. And so that's something that I've worked with a number of employers, even when I, you know, was in seat is that we need to make sure that I, I understand you don't like it, but you can't let that show. <clears throat> that cannot that, that cannot permeate the rest of the relationship you have with that particular employee. Right, absolutely. And if you let it do that, then you're in trouble for you know, retaliation or discrimination. And that's what will get you. Um, if, if you look at EEOC cases, the biggest one is retaliation. So, um, you know, you start thinking less of someone and they don't get the promotion or they don't get the good project or they get the poor performance rating that's not warranted. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, employees, a mental health condition is not a get out of work free card. Um, right when we talk about ADA accommodations, the t key word there is reasonable. Um, you know, depending on the job, the reasonableness, reasonableness is going to be different. Um, but a lot of jobs being there is a core function of the job. And if you can't do that, um, then it's going to be a problem. Or you can't say, I'm suffering from mental illness, so I can swear at customers. That's just, that's not happening. Um, not swearing at customers is a core function. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, yes. So it's it's not like a, I have a mental health issue. I can, I can do whatever I want. I can be mean to people. I don't have to show up. I don't have to do your call-in procedures. None of those things go away. No. Uh, it's designed to help you succeed in your job, but it's that in your job. And sometimes the accommodation is time off work. And sometimes you qualify under FMLA for time off work, but it's not permanent that way. Um, right. And if you can't eventually come back, then you have to be terminated. And that's not, I mean, it's a business. It yeah. has to happen if you can't if you can't work, which, um, you know, you may qualify for some disability, a long-term disability or something, um, which I have to say, this was my big thing in onboarding is telling people sign up for the long-term disability insurance. <laughs> it is the best investment you will ever make because chances are you won't need it. But if you do, you're going to be so great. Very thankful that you have it. Yep. Don't skimp on the LTD. Yeah. That's that's Suzanne's onboarding lecture. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So, as part of the program, we do find we do come up with questions for one another. I don't remember who went first the last time, but um, you want to go first? You want me to go first? I'll ask you my question. Okay, go for it. Okay. I am, this is the question, not me. <laughs> this, wait, that's clear. This is, this is a question from a, a reader, not, not my story. Okay. I need some extra money. Mm -hmm. And I have found a job that is a little bit unsavory. My question is, if I do work for this company, and I don't list it on my work history, on my background. Will HR departments know? And do I have to put all of my work history on my resume? Well, with the, so uh, you got a couple of things going on here. So <clears throat> first off, if you're seeking employment elsewhere, first off, a company can't dictate whether or not you can get a second job unless it is within direct conflict of that organization's business, right? <clears throat> so if it's a conflict of interest or it is, you're going to work for a competitor, um, they can actually say, you're not permitted to do that. You know, um, if they find out <clears throat> that you're working for a competitor or if it's a vendor or if it's, you know, a specific relation, ouch, relationship, or if it's a conflict of interest, they could, you risk termination from, from your primary employer. And that's not a good position to be in. The second thing is, excuse me, I have a dog who's chewing on a curtain. Oh. 
in, a, in a hotel. That's not a good thing. <clears throat> and my feet at the same time. Um, so if you, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> um, so if you are seeking employment in the future and you don't list your employment, um, you know, there's a number of different ways to verify employment when you're going through a background check. And one of those ways is to actually run and identify your tax records to the, I, to the IRS. And that is a, that is a, an actual third party service that usually is bundled <clears throat> and more larger corporations will utilize that. And some of your positions may require that, you know, they have to go back and do a credit check and there are very few of them. But if you're managing assets of the company, uh, the company has the right to run and perform a credit check on your background. So that could potentially be discovered if it's discovered. So if you're not disclosing something, um, then you know what? Y your integrity is coming into question as well as, um, you know, your honesty as to whether or not you can be trusted. Are you going to tell the employer the whole, the whole bit of the truth? You know, look, everybody's got something in their lives that they're not necessarily proud of. We all have these chapters, right? And if you've had a position with a less than savory organization, I would much rather risk just being honest about it and say, listen, <clears throat> because I've, I've been in that situation back in 1991, 1990, when, um, in 91, when, you know, there was no work in my town and I worked under the table uh, doing inventory in an adult bookstore. Things we know about Brenda now. <laughs> I learned a lot more than I ever thought I would, that's for sure. But <laughs> since it was under the table, I never, I never had that discussion with anybody. But had it have been a W-2 situation, um, I would have, and I mean, like, I only did it like twice, but so I don't... I didn't even meet the IRS limit to have to claim it. Right. But even still I would have, you know, if I had to put that on my resume or if I had to, if I had an employment history back then I'd have to explain it. And it's just like, well, I did work for an adult bookstore, but I only did the inventory in the back. I wasn't, you know, out front running the counter. I wasn't involved in ordering anything. I just counted stuff. That's all I did and just reported it, you know? So just be upfront and be honest about it. And somebody said, well, why would you work for a place like that? And I'm like, look, I worked in it was a blue collar town and there was no work and I had to find what I could. And that was the best option that I had. But I got to tell you, I learned a lot about business. I learned about industry, you know, and then just, you know, just like talk about what you learned that could benefit, you know, your current position, right. Or the position that you're going into. So honesty is really always your best policy, but it's also about, how you frame it too and frame it in the positive and frame it in the benefit right <clears throat> and not to mention 1991 compared to ouch 2020 that was a long time ago all right your question you ready <laughs> yes and i will not have a dog biting at my feet <sighs> all right is an internal job opening a hoax because somebody else is already in line up for the job. So this is clearly coming from the perspective of an employee. Yes. And the answer to that is maybe, um, this is something that drives me crazy. Um, companies that have a policy, like we have to interview five people for the position, um, mm -hmm. even after they already know who they want to hire. Um, I don't like those policies. A lot of government jobs have have strict policies like that um, because it wastes everybody's time. And their logic is, well, maybe somebody better will come along. Well, maybe. Um, and maybe I'm going to lose 20 pounds by our next week. <laughs> but it's not going to happen. So you're just wasting everybody's time. So can it be? I mean, it's not a hoax. There's a position. But will you be considered? Probably not. But if it's an internal position, throwing your hat in the ring isn't necessarily a bad thing. Because A, it lets people know that you're interested in, in moving up. And a lot of mistakes that people make, and especially women make, is that they think they'll just be noticed. 
and then get promoted based on being noticed. And sometimes you're noticed, but a lot of time what you need to do is raise your hand and say, hey, I'm interested in this before people will, will look at you. The other thing is, is that job interviewing is a skill and it's not something we all do very often. I mean, how often do you apply for, for jobs? Um, most people, you know, you go through a period, you apply for 20 jobs, you get one, you work there for five years, and then you apply for 20 more jobs, and then you work there for five years. Um, we're not regularly doing that. So the opportunity to interview is always a good thing. If it's an external thing, then you have to take time off work or whatever, and that can just be a huge waste of your time. If it's internal, um, you're probably already at the location, you're, you're going to walk down the hallway, you have an opportunity to build a relationship with somebody outside of your department, or um, to increase your relationship with your current boss. So it's not all bad. I will say I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But um, I, I wouldn't discourage you from applying just for those reasons. You get your name out, you get noted on you know your file or your mental file from your boss or whatever is that hey this person um wants to move up and is taking control of her own career because if we just wait until we're the hand-picked person um, most of us will never be the hand-picked person awesome all righty. So guys, we have, between the two of us, we have two groups that we manage. And as we're starting to come to the end here, and if you heard the ringing of the cowbells in the back, that means somebody's got to go outside. Um, would you like to share with everybody your group? Absolutely. So you can find us at Evil HR Lady on Facebook. We talk about all things HR and business, and we share good HR memes. <laughs> And I'm over at the Next Gen Women in HR Facebook group. And like Suzanne, we do something very similar where we engage with one another and, um, you know, work to help each other solve our, uh, you know, people problems as an issue, share information, and uh, two really, really great groups that we are both actually involved with. So every now and again, we will each chime up in, as a guest in each other's groups, and we have a, we have a good time doing it. And the good news is that we're around some pretty fantastic people, which we really like and no jerks, which is really wonderful. So <laughs> again, my name is Brenda Neckwaller. You can find me at bestpractices.org. And to my left, yeah, yeah I did it right. My left is Suzanne <laughs> Lucas. It's the, as the evilhilady.org. And again, you can find us on our various social channels here that we are popping up. We are here every week. Um, we post a video each week on different topics uh, that we talk about in regards to how businesses can be more successful when it comes to dealing with their people issues. So we want to thank you guys again very much for joining us. And uh, we will see you next time. See you next week. See you next week.